What is up, everybody? Today, we are visiting the Atacama Desert in northern Chile. We'll be staying in San Pedro. This is a small village that will serve as our home base as we visit the natural wonders nearby. This includes rock formations, giant craters, alpine lakes, salt flats, geysers, and even an astronomical observatory. I'll share with you some travel tips so you can get the most out of your visit to San Pedro de Atacama. San Pedro is a popular stop for backpackers traveling by bus to and from Uni Bolivia. If you're flying in, you'll have to arrive at the Calama Airport and take a shuttle bus into town. We'll start at Valle de la Luna, or the Moon Valley, named after its resemblance to the surface of the moon. The rocky and barren landscape is so similar to other planets that NASA tested its Mars rover here. During our visit, we'll see landscapes covered in salt, sand dunes, and stunning rock formations formed by millennia of floods and winds. The Atacama is in high elevation with no cloud cover or light pollution, so it's perfect for stargazing. If you're visiting from the Northern Hemisphere, you'll see constellations you normally would not see in your own night sky. For example, look out for the famous Southern Cross. If you are interested in the cosmos, I highly recommend taking an astronomy tour. Using their high-powered telescopes, you could even gaze closer to Mars, Jupiter, and even Saturn. We'll start day number two by visiting Reserva Nacional Los Flamencos, almost 5,000 meters above sea level. The lakes are formed by melted ice from nearby mountains, but often dry out due to the heat of the desert. Here at the reserve, you'll find flamingos visiting during the summer storms of Bolivia, feeding on microbes and krill. You might see two varieties of flamingo, the Andean flamingo, which has yellow legs and a pale yellow beak with a black tip and the Chilean flamingo, which has a beak that is partially pink but mostly black, with grayish legs and pink leg joints. Next, we will visit the Alpine Lakes, almost 6,000 meters above sea level. These lagoons were formed by melted snow and rainwater. Now, at this elevation, the air is thinner, so you might experience mild altitude sickness. Symptoms include dizziness, headache, and shortness of breath. Here are some tips to prevent altitude sickness. The day before the trip, avoid consumption of alcohol. Eat foods rich in potassium, such as bananas, avocado, dried fruits, and even chocolate. Also, try eating complex carbs, such as pasta and whole grains. During the trip, remember to walk, don't run. Now, this one's easy to forget, because when you see the amazing lagoons, you will get excited and you might want to start running to take your photos. So remember to always monitor your movements and move slow at all times. And of course, stay hydrated, drink lots and lots of water. After a long day in the mountains, you'll probably feel like sleeping early, which is perfect because we're waking up early tomorrow to visit the geysers. Most tours depart between 4 and 5 a.m. because the geysers are about two hours away and are best experienced before sunrise. During the early morning hours, you can see the hot steam condense with the ice-cold morning air. By the way, be sure to bundle up because the desert is extremely cold at night. I went in May and it was negative 9 degrees Celsius. So I recommend bringing winter clothes, gloves, a hat, and a thick jacket. The temperatures will warm up during the day, so be sure to dress in layers. You can even bring a bathing suit if you want to go swimming in the hot springs. Now this section of the mountain range is young in geological terms, which is why it's still active with over 80 spouting geysers. Now the temperatures will be freezing cold in the morning, but do not try to warm up your fingers in the bubbling geysers. The water is over 85 degrees Celsius and you will suffer extreme burns. If you decide to take off your gloves so you can tap on your phone screen, do so quickly and then cover up. If you do want to submerge yourself in water, you can do so in the designated area for the natural hot springs. Don't pack away your bathing suit just yet because you'll need it for the salt lagoons. The high density salt water will allow you to lay back and float. Next, we'll take photos at the Ojos de Salar, two lagoons set very close to each other, resembling eyes. And finally, we'll finish off our day tour with a stunning sunset over the salt flats. If you're strapped for time, I recommend staying three days and three nights. 
If you want to take your time, stay five days. San Pedro has everything you need for your stay. Supermarkets, restaurants, souvenir shops, hostels, and tour offices. You can book your tours ahead of time, but I personally recommend booking a tour through your hostel or through one of the agencies in town. No matter where you buy, the prices are pretty much the same, but you'll get a discount if you book multiple tours. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed our tour of the Atacama. Do you plan on visiting soon? Have you already been? What would you add to the tour? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys pretty soon.